Hey everyone, um, hopefully I'm coming through loud and clear. Um, my name is Dexter Wimberly and I have the pleasure of um, speaking with you today um, with two artists that are um, in the current exhibition at the Harvey B. Gantt Center. Uh, the exhibition is called Visual Vanguard, um, an exhibition of contemporary black Carolina artists. And I'm joined today by Dare Coulter and Cole Peace, who are two of the artists in that fantastic show that was curated by David Wilson and Stephen Hayes. So uh, let's get started because we have a lot to cover today. Uh, I want to start off by introducing Dare Coulter. Um, Dare is an award-winning artist, muralist, and sculptor with a primary focus on monumental works. Her mission for her artwork is to create positive imagery of Black people and families. Her most recent notable work includes a 200-foot mural in Greensboro honoring Black cowboys in a painting of Nina Simone from the National Trust of Historic Preservation that was used to raise funds to restore Nina Simone's childhood home. That's pretty amazing. Uh, she has <laughs> illustrated three children's books, including My NC from A to Z, written by Michelle Lanier, and commissioned by the North Carolina African American Heritage Commission. She was born in Augusta, Georgia, and raised in Lorton, Virginia. For the second half of her life, she has lived in and around Raleigh, North Carolina, where the bulk of her public artwork has been created. She graduated from North Carolina State University with a bachelor's in art and design, but considers herself a graduate of the Meredith College's art program as well. So Dara, thank you for joining us today. Hey, no problem. I was about to say good morning. I have a tendency to say good morning and um, the people who know me in my like in real life uh, it's like good morning it's like 6 p.m or 4 a.m 4 p.m they're like are you what <laughs> like that people say good morning when they smile well. so, hi good morning <laughs> thank you for, for being our curator today um, and i'm excited to talk with you sure absolutely i want to go ahead and also introduce uh cold piece so christopher johnson also known as Cold Peace, is pursuing his MFA in the Community Arts Program at the Maryland Institute College of Art. He received his bachelor's in graphic design from Charleston Southern University. He is currently an artist in residence at the Greenmont West Community Center and has other honors such as the Leslie King Hammond Graduate Fellowship, the Siegel Education Award in AmeriCorps with 1,700 hours of service and has partnered with the festival sports teams, nonprofits, schools, and institutions such as South by Southwest and the Piccolo Spoleto Festival. Cold Peace has impacted numerous community arts projects with the intent to bring neighbors together through conversation during his riveting interactive live painting sessions and newly found passion for mural storytelling. His work has been exhibited at several institutions, including the UB Blake National Jazz Institute and Cultural Center, the Seoul Alexander Gallery, and the Maryland Institute College of Art. Uh, so I want to welcome you to today's conversation as well, Cold Peace. What's going on? How y'all doing, man? How Listen. are you? How are you? <laughs> Now I'm happy to be here. Listen, uh, I done graduated, so we, we done with that graduate program. Woo! Yeah, for real, uh, we're done. That's uh, awesome. Thank y'all for having me. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, so I'm seeing I'm seeing you on the screen now. I'm sure that uh, that that Dare is still there. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm still and, uh, yeah. You said awesome. you graduated. I was like, woo! I don't know if you heard it, but congratulations. That's so cool. I love it. Love well, look, um, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited about today's conversation. And I and I and I want to start off um, by just kind of like, you know, thanking you for your your generous time today. I know that there's a lot going on in the world and uh, that you're making time for this conversation is meaningful um, and we don't take it for granted. So I want to thank you both. Um, so you're both artists whose work is quite different from one another, and uh, you're joining us today because you're both in a fantastic exhibition that's currently on view at the Gantt Center. But Cold Piece, I want to start with you. So for someone who's not familiar with your work, right, uh, you know, when you meet someone and you describe the work that you make, um, how, do you, how do you describe your, your artistic practice? Uh Good question. It's uh, it's from my soul. It's from the soul. Uh, I'm from South Carolina, so uh, born and raised, and I, I love to paint with the spirit of uh, joy and enthusiasm. Um, even if it's my performative art uh, arts works, uh, which takes about eight to six to eight minutes to create towards music, um, I paint from the you know the inner parts of my childhood. Or if it's my studio pieces, I I, I definitely um, like to create to tell stories 
of uh, just tall tale stories of um, from where I came from. And paint it only in my style, the best way I know how, and to be able to share it with folks and to hear the reaction from folks. I love to see them enjoy, see them smiling, see them having everything. And, and, I, and I like to see uh, my youth, uh, them have a good time with my artwork. And, um, and uh, you know, it's, it's kind of weird to be able to uh, say to describe your work because, you know, when you get put on the spot, you be like, describe your work and be like, man, I don't, I, I love to paint. That's, that's what I, that's what I got. But there's so many forms of art, beautiful art. Uh, like myself and Darius is like, you know, it, it, what do you describe yourself for the beauty of it? So I, I just, uh, I can say that it, it brings me joy. And uh, so I just wanted to bring others joy. And that uh, makes sense to it. No, that's, fan that's fantastic. Yeah. And uh, I have a follow up to that question. So I'm going to give you a moment to think about the follow up while I ask um, Dare to answer the same question about describing her work. But my follow up, Cole, piece is uh, what, are you, what are your influences? Like, what has really inspired you? So I'm going to come back. I'll give you a moment to think about that. So, right. so there. Um, how do you how do you describe your work? Um, you know, you bump into me in the elevator, and I'd never met you before, and you're like, "I'm an artist," and I go, "Cool. <laughs> what kind of work do you make?" Um, so typically, when I talk, I'm like, "You're like, what do you do? I'm an artist. I paint, I draw, I sculpt, um, and primarily I focus on positive imagery of Black people and Black joy." Um, and it's funny because you said cold piece, and now we have work that's very different. I think the intersecting line is that concept of joy. Um, and it's neat because the work that he's doing focuses on um, and the, the stuff that his MFA is related to deals with community and building community and actually having, um, you know, community interaction. I think, you know, at the base level, I would say most artists have this objective to change the world and, and influence stuff and, and do something wonderful for people. So at the core of all things, creating this positive imagery of Black people, this imagery where we are you know, wonderful and powerful and happy. Um, that's something that's important because of, of the number of ways that, you know, that's not something that we get to see. So I'm a sculptor, like I, sculptor is my jam. Like that's my, that's my baby, but I'm also a book illustrator. Um, I would say that in a lot of different ways I create art, but um, the most important thing is that the objective all comes back to the same. Um, but you say creating healing or creating happiness. Um, that's, that's what we're all trying to do, I'd say. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Um, so, Colpies, you've had a you've had a moment to think about my last question in terms of like what have been your greatest influences. You know, it doesn't have to be other artists. It could be, but I'm just kind of curious. You know, it could be people, places, or things. But what has really like you know motivated you and inspired you? Um, so you know when you gotta choose what you want to eat on the menu, and you gotta think <laughs> about it. I can ask you again, and you don't be like, I still don't know. Um, but uh, truly, it's really, uh, truly, that's that moment right now. But uh, I, I do think that um, so my youth is one, um, but also artists, uh, people like there, and you know, so like when me and share, we share, we should, we broke bread together. And so it was like talking to another artist. Yeah, for real, like we're talking to another artist, but actually talking about it because we are both living artists. You know, it's rare to find living, you know, what I'm saying artists who are still breathing that same passion. Um, because when you have those conversations, you, you don't get to talk about the uh, the making and the process of it, the community process. Uh, being a community artist, a studio artist, a muralist, and all of those great names and those great titles um, that to people hold so dearly, but at the end of the day, you're human. And so I feel like my biggest influence is just being human, being a Black man, coming from the South and then going out into the world and then talking to youth and then talking to elders and still having the same conversation about the color blue and <laughs> saying that they're both the same exact thing and they're having the impact of just a color. Um, I didn't know art can be so impactful um, until I started to grow and uh, I learned my lifestyle, my character. And so I think the real thing that clicked um, in my space and in my spirit and that impacted me more has been meeting artists like like I'm talking to today, or like there, like other artists who just had a conversation with them, uh, asking questions like, well, "What is what is the center core of your work? What do you why, why are you doing it? What do you, what do you mean?" And he'd be like, "Why? What do you mean? Why am I doing it?" Um, and so you got to find the recipe that um, that creates this narrative of what your work does. And I think that uh, not just finishing my own personal MFA, but also my own practice, um, it has taught me and, and changed my character views on um, what I'm doing and what it means to be impactful um, to myself now. So. Um, that's that's what I have to say <laughs> answer that question. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, that that's great. And I mean, you know, one of the things that has come up um, multiple times when, when I hear both of you speaking is this word community, right? 
And, you know, I talked to a lot of artists um, over the years. Um, I don't know how many, but, but a lot. And, you know, um, that that's a very important word community and it doesn't come up all the time. And, and I'm curious as to why community is so important to, to each of you. Um, Cause it seems to be critically important in, in your, in your art making. So, you know, Dare, maybe you can speak to that. Yeah. And uh, so, okay. Going back to that conversation that Colby talked about, like when I saw the email that said that we were going to be the people talking together, I got so excited because we, we sat down and we talked and we ate and it was like, you know, typically I'm running a thousand miles a minute, but this was a moment of pause. And, you know, talking to him in this conversation was this, this genuine space of like, okay, we want to be able to change life for people and and create something different for them and it's like with community engagement um i was working at the time i was an artist and res i was the artist in resident i was the city of raleigh's first artist in resident which was for residence which is pretty cool um but i was working as the artist in residence for the bus rapid transit system um and we're you know one of the things that started the conversation was the difficulty of community engagement during the pandemic um, where people are at home, but not only are people at home, you have people facing homelessness, you have people facing, you know, violence, you have the, a, a pandemic where Black people are also seeing themselves still be killed on 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 screen. Um, so I think when you grow up, um, there's this instance where you understand that not only are you a person, but you're also Black. Um, and it's not that Black people get to disassociate from Blackness, but I think the scale of what that means in relation to what life will try to do to you, the way that life will try to stop you, the way that other people will try and stop you. I think there ends up being this big determination where you say, okay, for one, um, it's my job to take the the gift that I have and do something with it. Um, but then the question becomes like, how is it will, that, that you'll use your skill set to actually do something meaningful? Um, the question of mortality and legacy, both of those are, are things that plague me in this terrible way because, you know, I'm constantly afraid of dying, um, but I'm also constantly afraid of not, like the, the fear of death has more to do with not accomplishing the things that I'm hoping to accomplish in my life. Um, you know, I, I talk about the space of foundations that I, I can create for other artists to be able to move them to their, the, the purpose point faster. Um, talking about being able to, create art that makes people feel like they matter, that they're special, that, you know, resonates with them. That's a celebration of who they are. Um, when you when you talk about people and, and, and purpose, I think a lot of times in art, it, it becomes, okay, so you can make pictures, now what? And so it's like talking about community, talking about, about being connected with people, about giving back, about what you're creating, um, this thing that you're building, it's the most important question because at, at the end of the day, if you're not impacting people, um, if you're not doing something meaningful with your gift, then I think you're, you're I would say you're using it irresponsibly. Um, so it's like, you know, it's not just about you, it's, it's about other artists, it's about the people that, who, that will interact with your work, it's about the people who will interact with your work when you're gone. Um, and those are really weighty things. And I think most artists have some point of concept of like, okay, these pieces that I'm creating should outlive me. And if they do, what do people learn about me from these works that, that live on, you know? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. No, no, I, I and, and, and I'm cold piece. Would you want to add something to that? Yeah, I, I I agree with there. Um, especially speaking on uh, what the the everlasting uh, feeling of a work. Um, the there's a moment that has the community. There's there's a community. Uh, I'm going to just talk a little ground for a second. If that's okay with y'all, um, community have this way of being um, very hard and be and be on that bull sometimes. And 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 the reason why I say is um, you have this vision as an artist. You have this vision going into the space. Um, and then there can be maybe one person that says, I don't like that. Your whole idea has to shift because of that one, check this out now, but that one voice may be the grandmother, the grandfather of the neighborhood. And you never know what that lesson can teach you. So you, uh, myself, as I was like, I had to get out my own way because I've had that happen. My own ego, my own way, my own selfishness of, of my creativity have been like, all right, I have this mission, right? But 
how can I, you know, completely go through that mission and then not consider the people around me? You know, I have cons- I'm going in there with a passion, but my consideration was low. And it's like listening to them, like, all right, man, they give me all this hell, all this stuff. They argue, you know, having back and forth conversations, but that turned into a whole relationship of <laughs> building a relationship with a person that you've never met before, all because you wanted to put to paint a stop sign blue or something. You wanted to just do something. <laughs> And it shifted a whole idea of thought process and, and what happened. Um, right now, uh, being in Baltimore, I'm doing a residency, residency here in Baltimore at the Greenmont West Community Center. Um, we're working on a project called the um, Bill Community Bill. This project's taken, ye- like beforehand, it was just me and a colleague wanting to do a mural on the wall. Um, that was the first beginning. But in truth, the inside of the house, it looks terrible. It looks, it looks bad. And so you cannot paint a mural on the outside of a house that looks like, and so I'm gonna say it like that because I don't know who watched, but it looks it looks terrible. And so we re- we realize that the inside has to the be- the outside can't be beautiful and the inside not be beautiful. And so community comes in that factor with arts. Like you you can take you can be an artist, you can be creative, but there's there's human qualities you have to consider with being a community artist. And so talking to this elder and speaking to her and getting to know her more, we went back and forth on the design for like months. And we had to change the design. We had to do these things. We had meetings. And now we're in the process of funding. We, we're trying to get 150K. We're trying to get to that goal. We raised 10K. Like we're going towards 10K. We raised like six, but we're getting to that point. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it means about community. This is not just me creating or myself, or other artists creating artwork. It's more than that. I'm creating in the streets live paintings. These paintings, real quick, just to create, amplify what this cause is. I have colleagues, you know, pushing the work. I have coworkers who was pushing the work out on social media and, and getting the news, whatever, just because we want to make sure this elder's home is looking beautiful on the inside and out because we're trying to let her Asian grace with dignity, you know, and dignity and grace, just Asian place with dignity and grace because we want her to have, like Dare said, an everlasting or that momentum feeling of her just being in a beautiful spot when the city don't give a damn about her, excuse me, but they don't give a damn about how she lives or die the next day. You know, but people like us, it takes artists or even community people like us to be like, all right, let's invest, let's engage, let's let's put it in, let's actually do something about it. Going to the house, getting the stuff out, you know, we're doing these certain things to make a bigger impact. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's so there's so much to unpack there. I mean, I think that um, one of the questions I have um, has to do with, you know, like seeing the role, you know, like seeing the role of the artist outside of the commercial you know, the commercial space, right? I think that for, for most people, and maybe that's sort of like the disconnect, for, for most people I encounter, when they think about an artist, an artist they immediately think, okay, so um, you, you must, you know, be working with a gallery, you're selling your work to collectors, and that's kind of like the extent of the, their vision of like what an artist is. It's just someone <laughs> who makes paintings or sculpture or whatever. They and they the frolic, gallery, they sell this frolic all day. Right, right. They they sell them to rich collectors, and then like there's and that that's the art world as they know it. Um, and then you know when you start talking to them about how an artist can be part of a community and be engaged in community and can have an impact on people's lives in a very meaningful and deep way, for for a lot of folks, that's like, huh, right. You know, uh, it can you know it can have this effect. So anyway, I don't even know if that was a question so much as sort of like an observation. But I want to I want to kind of take it back to something maybe a bit more even personal for each of you. So um, so growing up, were you encouraged to be creative, to be an artist? I mean, you just got your, your MFA, um, you know, cold piece and, you know, that's no small thing, right? Like I know a lot of people with MFAs who, you know, their parents were like, you want to do what? <laughs> um, right. So I'm just kind of curious to hear a little bit about your journey to, you know, to, to the, this place as an artist, like, uh, was it encouraged and what were your obstacles? Oh, well, that's a, uh, that's a big question. Uh, so let, me, let me clear my throat a little bit, get a little, uh, <laughs> um, so being from, uh, being from the South, uh, I was raised by my mother, um, and my grandmother. And, uh, one thing my mother taught me is to be mean and nice. And so I learned both and I'm explaining this to Dare at one point. I was like, man, you, you got to go in that thing stumping. Um, and so when I started to get into the art, like an undergrad, um, there was no, there was no art program. There was no platform for it. So I had to go through these trials of not only being, uh, myself, but being good and good and countryfied and, and wanted to do some, some really impactful art in these spaces and wanted to paint 
being in this quick speed and, and say, oh, I can do this and I can sell and make money. Mama, look at that. And so my mother, at one point, she was, she was she didn't know about it. She didn't know I could, you know, she didn't know I could do these things. And uh, uh, one day she was outside and uh, we couldn't pay for my school and she started crying. Uh, she teared up. She was crying in the car. I've never seen my mother cry. She was the ideal of the strong woman. And so that, that was supposed to be because she raised me. That's what she had to do. Uh, when I saw my mother break down, there was a fire that woke up in me. And so I'm like, I got to do something. Um, and so I was, I was like, all right, it's time to get real. And so I went out into the city of Charleston, uh, South Carolina, and I just went to train at, at nightclubs and events at, uh, at different uh, places in, in Charleston, just so people would see and respect my art. Because I really, I just took my heart out and just gave it to people. I didn't give a damn if it was, <laughs> it was uh, if anybody it could be white, black, uh, pink, purple. You know, people say them colors, but and truly, it's only black and white. And I was like, all right, let's let me just give these people my art and just see what they could take. Um, and show notes, you know, people maybe say here and there, but I had to work that thing for years um, before I actually uh, somebody respected my work. Um, so that's when I go to uh, spaces and places um, out into the world. You know, people like you using spray paint, you using fire, you doing all this stuff. It's going to hurt us. It's going to do that. That's fine. I've been there. I, had, I don't mind explaining it, but I know that I can make something impactful. And so coming up to uh, places like uh, Baltimore and then going and moving uh, up here, um, I found an impact of a culture of cultural people who uh, believe um, in what can happen and what I can do and, and, and fed me. Um, the realness that I needed uh, to be order to push myself and going towards the MFA. Um, I didn't take an MFA to be like, oh, I need MFA to be an artist. I, I didn't get that for that version. Uh, I, I, I wanted it because I wanted to, you know, dive into my, my practice deeply. I wanted to to stretch out what does that mean. I'm still working at it and I ain't even there yet. Um, showing what it means to be made down south. Well, showing what it means to be a southern man. You know, how does that feel? Um, yes, I am my own artist and I believe that, but I believe that so much other beautiful artwork artists have taught me and teach me along the way. And so as I as I kept moving forward, I found that my love, my passion is uh, seeing, like I said, the joy of people and the joy of my youth and the joy of elders and, and giving, giving to people. Um, though I don't have much, I was like, if I can do something small, like paint a lot of painting there, people feel something about it. You know what I'm saying? That's my little, that's my little give back to the world. That's what God gave me. So I'm like, all right, I can I can do my, my thing. But uh, the try, it wasn't easy because I guess I'm black. Like that, like that shirt. That sh I love that shirt, by the way. But like that shirt, so I'm Ooh, black, you know? I, I made it. Thank you. <laughs> it's all love, you know. I'm black, and I'm going out into the world trying to do something that is called in the world. They they de um, it's defined as speed painting, but I call it full performative painting. Um, and so I'm able to do these paintings uh, in a matter of minutes, and then like, okay, I'm able to make it make people feel something, but. I worked at it because my grandmother, like I said, my grandmother raised me. My grandmother sung to me as a kid, and I used that. Um, my mother used to like to, you know, my parents like to dance. They like to, they like, they love music. And um, on these times, you know, even um, I know we won't talk about the pandemic, but even pre during the pandemic, it was it was impactful because uh, you you gain things. You you th you think you lost so much, but you really gain a, a part of you that was um, lost so long ago that you needed to get back. And I think the pandemic taught us as artists or as individual people a lot. Um, and it gave us something that we lost a long time ago. And so I think the essence of that is that um, this journey has been uh, very um, a lesson um, and it's not over yet. I literally just put gas in the car. So I, I ain't even drove the car yet and I just put gas in it. So I think I'm gonna still figure out this pathway of what this thing is called, an artist life is. Yeah. That's great, that's great. And and uh, there, you know, same, so same question to you. Um, and it's so ultimately with, with my, my journey, my product, the, the thing through being an artist is wild. I was, I was supported. I hope you guys uh, froze a bit. I don't know if it's me frozen. Oh, okay. Um, I, I can, you you sound very choppy to me. Can everyone, can you hear me clearly, cold piece? I can hear you. I can hear you. Uh, am I choppy at all? I can hear you. No, hear you're, you're clear. So extra, I think you're the choppy one. Um, are you back? Okay. Okay. We got a smile. Okay. <laughs> um, and so, okay, Dexter, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so I was, I was supported I'm good. as an artist. I'm good. Perfect. All right, um, I was supported. Um, I was raised by a single mom. Single mom had three babies, three girls, um, and she moved us up to uh, Fairfax County, the Virginia school system, because it was the best school system in the nation. 
Um, she wanted to make sure that we had the same quality of life that we would have had if we had um, a two parent household. So my mom was, um, she was a, God, she's been a rider. She's always a rider. Um, but when I was younger, she would like, we would go to the store uh, to Michael's to go get art supplies. I didn't know there were any other art stores other than Michael's, but we would go to Michael's and she would get nervous because, you know, when it was every time it was routinely a hundred dollars. And she just told me in the last year, like when it was a hundred dollars or it was above a hundred dollars, she had to move stuff around to make stuff pan out. But um, you know, I didn't uh, grow up in an instance where there was this concept of scarcity either. Like I never had to worry about, um, you know, food or home insecurity. Um, those things were always there. But even beyond that, um, at the point that I went to college, I went to NC State and that was like 16 minutes up the street from the house. So I was able to, you know, the first, I think two years I lived in dorms. And then after that, I lived at home. Um, and you know, my mom was a support system through that. She was a support system after at the point that I graduated college, um, I was able to stay living at home. I wasn't paying rent or anything like that. She paid my phone. She paid the, the stuff. Um, you know, that's because I wasn't able to pay for things. Like I wasn't making money, um, as an artist and it's wild because we got up to the point where she said, okay, so, you know, um, and I, she, she told me something I didn't remember. She's like, you know, you're really upset this one time because you wanted to get a taco and it cost a dollar and you didn't have a dollar. And she's like, of course I bought you a taco, but like, you know, I, I didn't recall that being the case. So it was like this thing where I wasn't selling my paintings. I'm really bad with like follow through and like follow through as far as like, like actually somebody's like, yo, I want to buy that painting. I'm like, cool. And then they never hear from me again about it. Right. So like I had all my paintings, they would just sit in the house and I I was like, whatever, it's fine, everything's good. And, um, you know, we, we got to the point conversationally where she's like, look, I know you're trying to do this art thing and I support you, but if we can't make it work in the space of this next year, then maybe, like, I, I think we need to talk about you getting a job so that, you know, you can have insurance benefits, health coverage, and, and it can help you get some money in. And um, in the space of that year, stuff started happening. So it was just like, you know, I, I can't say that I've been through this instance where um, there are a lot of artists who they, they tell their parents, I want to be an artist. And their parents are like, no, you'll be a doctor. Or like, you know, they kick them out or it's, you know, this bad time. Like, I didn't have that. And people always believed in my talent. So I, I feel like the process of being an artist for me, it wasn't like, it wasn't wrought with strife. It wasn't this painful experience. Um, it's just, you know, obstacles that happened were personal things or, or me trying to figure out how to make this stuff work. Um, I was in college. College was an important experience, but I was, it was the worst time of my life. Um, and, you know, trying to figure out how to like, right. Like trying to figure out how to resolve like this thing that you love being so complicated. Like, I don't think anyone really prepares you for the concept that it's going to be difficult to live your dream, that you're going to have bad times doing the thing that you love. And so it's like primarily the obstacles have been those things that, that I, I didn't expect, that I didn't understand would happen in the space of me trying to pursue this thing that I love because you just have this assumption. When I said uh, people assume that artists just frolic all day, they're like, oh, they're great and they're happy. And um, I'm gonna wrap it up, I know I'm talking a while, but um, we were in art history class and um, my professor said that, and this is Professor James Wells and I absolutely love him, uh, but he said that, you know, people have this concept that artists are, are, um, are the creation of artists. Uh, I don't know if I can say this word on, on the, on the, in this discussion, but like, I would just say it comes out and that's, that's, I'm not going to go any, whatever. So art comes out. Right. And I'm like, no, it's the opposite. It's like, it's excretory. Like, you know, you create because you can't not like you create. It's like, if you don't take, if you don't, if you don't, who? It, it just you, you get a stomach ache and everything's terrible like it just it has to come out there's not really a choice but it doesn't mean that it's pleasurable and joyful and exciting it means that you're you're more miserable if you don't create and you're lucky if it feels good and a lot of times it does but but there are definitely times where it's painful and complicated so my obstacles have been not this external lack of support thing it's only been you know trying to find my way which i would argue you have to do with anything um, but yeah, it's just, you know, I, I had, I had, I, I had belief, I had support, I had a place to stay. I didn't have to worry about feeding 
a child. I didn't have to worry about feeding myself. Worst case scenario, there was food. If I, if I, like, I liked my salads and stuff, but you know, there was always something for me to fall back on. I had a safety net. Um, and I think that that's something that's really important. So for me, it was just not this troubled experience. It was just, you know, sorting through the other stuff that added the trouble. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, we have some, some, you know, great opportunities right now in terms of you both being in your studio, we get to, you know, look at some work. I also believe we have some images um, that we can share as well. Um, I'm not sure if that's queued up, but we can, we can start with some of the images they're ready. So <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So um, yeah, so let's take, let's take a minute. Let's take a minute on each of these pieces so that we can then get to like looking around in your studio a little bit. Yeah. So, go um, for so, it. so this piece um, is called the black and the berry and it is actually part of a bigger concept of stuff that I've still got to create. Cause I think as an artist, you end up with this backlog and you're like, yo, I'm gonna do that. And there are like 200 things that you're like, I'm gonna do that. But this was the first of um, one of those series, the, the concept of blackness, um, like I said, it's complicated because while there's simultaneous joy, it's like, it's like the black experience seems to be simultaneous joy and simultaneous pain. Um, and so it's like, you're excited about the things that happen, but also it seems like tragedy is kind of right around the corner. If it's not for you, it's for someone you love or care about or someone that you don't know, but you say, um, kind of like Barack Obama's thing where he said, well, Trayvon Martin could have been my son. I think we put our sh ourselves in the shoes of other people, understanding that the human experience is just that, but um, you're not excluded from a human experience. And that means that these things could happen to you, particularly in a place where these things do happen to people who look like you. Um, so the black or the berry is like, there's this joy, there's so much, beauty and vibrance in being black um this experience is not one that i would trade for anything and um it's weird because understanding that life would be easier or or it would have a different set of struggles to be not black um but then to choose this thing i think that to be a descendant of this culture is a point of utmost pride for me um, to be an example for the people who will come after me, that's a point of utmost pride. So this, the, the smiling faces talk about that joy, the, the light and the vibrance that we have, the dancing musicality of blackness that, you know, is, it's just, it's in the air. Like black people know of what this is because we experience it, we live it. We, we, we have this, this rhythmicness that's attached to our souls in this experience. But the very far back, um, the black or the berry, it, it's a, a fruit concept which goes to the concept of strange fruit, um, which of course, strange fruit hang, hanging from the poplar trees, which talks about lynchings and um, the bad experiences. So way in the back, you have this cherry that's rotted. Um, it's, it's rotted and it's, it's bruised and it's, um, it's split open and its insides are gushing out. Um, and it's like that weirdness where you're like, oh yeah, good time, we're black. And then you're like, yo, like, you know, um, there's news about Ahmaud Aubrey's um, trial, the jury was picked and it's like, dude was just running. And so it's like, you know, we have these things where you're like, you're moving through life and then um, the, the, the problems that exist in the black diaspora, they end up kind of jerking you out of this joyful space because I mean, you know, media is like, yo, check out this thing. And it's just, it's difficult. So, so this, this experience where there's joy and pain side by side um, I would say for decades, that's been just, just part of that existence. And, and this is a piece that talks about that. And it's like, these are sculptures. I oh. love sculptures. I love holding these in my hand. They make me happy. They're just, they're, they're, they're cute. They're cute. So I, <laughs> I like <laughs> these so much. Okay. Thank, well, thanks for sharing that. Let's go to the next image. Oh yeah, this one. Okay, so I'm talking about this because there's some stuff that I can't talk about, but there's some stuff that's important. So I wrote this book with my mom and you said three books. That, that means I need to update my site. I think I'm on the sixth book right now. Um, but wow. this book is a, thank you. This is a book I wrote with my mom who I super love. It's called The World is Locked Up. Um, and the reason I actually put this image in it, this image is from this book. Um, but this image, um, I created this, some really exciting thing happened in the middle of um of the pandemic i ended up um actually getting an agent so i have an agent for my illustrated works um and so for for children's books while i was working on this book and it took me three days to do the images for the entire book um in the middle of that i was also working on sample images that i was sending to the 
the the my my eventually uh, who would be eventually my agent. Um, and so it was like these two things were happening at once. And it was this, this thing where everything was like bubbling up and I'm like, okay, I've got to get this stuff done. So it's just, I, I bring this up to say one thing, one, it's exciting that I get to work with my mom and collaborate with her. She's got this, this, this creative thing. She's just exuberant. Um, and so being able to be an adult that gets to collaborate with my mom and I love her and she's the person who's pulled me through my life and supported my journey is really exciting. But also the fact that um, having the agent happen at the same time that I was working on this book. So it, it just, I think it's really cool that they were birthed at the same moment. Great, great. Let's advance to the, to the next. Yeah, this is the Nina Simone picture that the aforementioned, um, the image that was used to raise funds to restore her childhood home. So that was super duper exciting um, because it was like the, um, the, the, the the campaign itself got a lot of attention um, internationally. People were like, "What do you mean her childhood home is you know in disrepair?" And uh, being able to be a part of that was really cool. Uh, it just it it kind of it got weird because like okay, so John Legend ended up sharing um, the image as like it was his banner on Twitter for a second, and I was like, "Yo, that's my piece." But the the image that he shared was like this discolored image, and like my name, they, nobody knew who I was because it didn't get credited. Um, and that was really difficult, but, um, you know, I just, this picture got seen in all of these places and it's on these posters that will be in people's houses until the end of time. Um, and I know that at the, at the end of this prog, this, this project, when they said, okay, it was funded that, that gave me a bigger concept of what could happen as far as like what my art could do. My art can, can raise funds. It can change something. It can put someone in a position to, to be financially better. What Cole Peace is talking about raising funds to restore the elders home, like art can do that. And I don't think I had a solid concept of that until this campaign happened. So it was, it was just really cool all around, but also this wow, that's the, the story cool. longer, it was cool. That's tremendous, that's tremendous. Um, let's you. advance to the next image. This one, all right, so this is my first monument, okay? And I was really excited about this for a number of reasons. I'm going to talk to this really, really fast. So back in 2016, there was a, uh, hold on, starting before that, the campus of UNCW, um, they put out a call for artists to be able to, um, to find someone to create a monument about Black Lives Matter, um, you know, basically affirming that. And I thought it was really cool. So I applied and I got it, which was dope. Um, and then I ended up, you know, before I, I put in my application, I made a phone call. So the person who I collaborated with this piece on is the absolutely wonderful Matt Dilling of Light Bright Neon. Um, and Matt from Light Bright Neon, he was, um, there was an article in, in 2016, the, the sign that marks where Emmett Till's body was pulled from the Tallahatchie River was being shot by white supremacists because they're just weird. Um, and you know, it was, a uh, in the article, they talked about Matt creating this bulletproof sign that would be replaceable in the event that, you know, stuff had happened to it, but it was bulletproof and supposed to be indestructible, which was something that was really important because people just kept shooting the sign, which is horrific. But, um, I called him, I was like, yo, would, would you be willing to work with me on this project? Cause I knew it was Wilmington. I know that people are really touchy about that stuff, but I wanted this piece to be something that was indestructible that wouldn't be able to be torn down or, or demolished because someone was upset about the things it was talking about. It's talking about the Wilmington massacre of 1897. It's talking about the fact that black lives do matter. It's talking about um, the Gullah Geechee culture and the corridor. There's a, a quote um, that, that talks about making sure that we remember and acknowledge these things. It's, it's pretty heavy stuff. So um, the, the fantastic I don't know, part of that, like working with Matt and his team, like having a team fabricate the piece. There's Temple, who's the welder, and Frank, who did the files. But like I showed up there, I went up to New York and um, there was an exhibit that um, that I went to go see prior to actually working on this. And it was, um, I'm blanking on the name right now, but it was just being in that space after that exhibit. Like I'm working in a garage and the crates for like Glenn Ligon's artworks are just around me and I'm just like, okay, cool. I'm like, I'm in this space where all of this, this magical, fantastic stuff had happened. Um, and it was really, really important for me because like I said, this is the first monument. I want a monument on every continent. And 
primarily I want them to be more sculptural than this, but like um, this was the, this is the first one. It's my first baby. It's really, it's great. And the USCW team is Fidius and Danielle and they fought for it. And, and it was just this, there was a lot of pushback, but it got to happen. And, and that was fantastic. Well, that, that's, that's, thanks for sharing that. This really, that's really fantastic. And I know that um, we probably have a couple more images in the interest of time. Let's see, let's advance oh, to the awesome. next image um, and see where we are. And maybe super um, short. you could just speak Please. really yeah, yeah, on super this short. one and we'll go to the next step like to get to cold piece as well. Mike Williams from the Black on Black Project is one of my favorite people in the whole wide world, but he's a curator who gave me my first, um, my first, what is it called? It's not, it wasn't a residency, um, but it, it it was also a residency and, and that was really, um, it was fantastic. So the show is called Right Before We Fly. This was 2018, I believe. And it was wild because this is the beginning of the scent of my career. Um, and it's like, it's weird because it's still going up. We still got to get there, but it's like, that was the beginning of it. And the show was really important to me. And these are matriarchs and that's it about that. I think that's Excellent. the last piece. Excellent. Too. Let's advance to the next. Ah, okay, fast. Black Cowboys, Greensboro. This is in Greensboro on the side of a roses that's on Cone Boulevard. Marty Cotis and his team. Um, I reached out about a quick mural and he's like, I have this 200 foot wall. Do you want to paint it? And I was like, of course I do. Um, so this mural on the far left, that's my grandfather who was a black cowboy, but this we are missing from the narrative of cowboys and we were cowboys. Like we were out there gunslinging, rootin' tootin', being fantastic, but um, being able to paint this and have actual black cowboys showed up. Like I had heard of them, but I hadn't seen them and they showed up on horses and it was phenomenal. But just knowing that there's this vibrance in our story that we were the people that, that kids just dream of being, it was us. That's really, really special to me. All right, that's it. Awesome, thank you so much, Dare. Thank you, yeah. thank you. So, so cold piece. We're gonna do the same with you. We're gonna look at we're gonna look at some images, um, and we'll try to fire through them so we can also look at some of the work that's in your studio. Okay, I need that poster and that uh that uh yeah, I need that poster there. Like me. I got you, I got <laughs> you. Text me your address. I got you. <laughs> so we have some great, great. So let's get started. Ooh, all right. This was at the uh, this is at the beautiful Harvey Begin. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the Harvey. But uh, so this piece here, uh, it was it, it was very fun to make this piece. I call it uh, my Aunt Blondell House um, because uh, during that time, I, the first original name was uh, Brothers and Sisters Sings Blondell. I kept changing the name um, only because it reminded me of back home, and I used images of uh, other uh, reference photos from photographers, and I was trying to explain it to uh, one of the artist's daughters. Man, and we was talking. I was like. All right, let's let's act like we talked about something for real. She just started laughing um, because I love making people laugh, and it's not mostly my paintings, but it's the experience of uh, what the art can do. Um, and so uh, the uh, Juan Blondell's house, the painting itself is like four feet by eight feet uh, acrylic based painting, um, and to describe the journey of uh, become uh, becoming who you are as a, as an individual, the journey you have to take, um, where. Um, as impactful as a young person, you have young people all over the painting. Um, and I was telling her that um, at my aunt Blondell's, uh, uh, rest of soul, her spirit, uh, my aunt, she would always come in the room dancing and uh, have the fur coats and the big old glasses and everything just looking fly as ever. And so when she came in the room, she just made people feel this type of love and this joy. And so for uh, for this uh, young girl here, she just, you know, she made me feel like just a kid, like she was just, she impacted me because she looked like one of the kids in my paintings. And so I was like, all right, let me talk to her about it. And I was just asking the question, like, what do you see? What can you see? And it's kind of like a Where's Waldo type of painting, um, that type of feeling. So it's like, where, what is this? Where is this at? And so you can see so much going on in the painting. But uh, this painting was actually created in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, and it was when, uh, you know, I didn't have much. I was, I think I slept. On, on the, uh, in, in the back of my vehicle at one point just to create this painting in the day. Um, and so when I created this painting, and, um, I was very I was very sad at one point um, because I, I really, this painting just kind of describes how I feel um, in pieces of it because uh, most of the faces, they look very, uh, it looks sad and dismayed and not a joyful feeling um, because at that point in time, you know, I thought my, uh, my, my, my message uh, was uh, was wasn't worth much. It wasn't ex expected as others. And it was like, I was trying to compare. Um, as I got older, I stopped doing that. Um, I stopped trying to, I just did my own thing. I stopped worrying about um, how others seen it and how I would see myself, how I would see others and how I would reflect 
on um, people in Pac-Man. So that's why I definitely wanted this uh, this <laughs> this beautiful black girl, man. She just this young. She just like she her her expression of it was made me happy because I was able just to uh, talk to somebody about my art, and I just it always makes me happy no matter uh, where is that or where is being held at. So that was this photo. <laughs> great, great. Let's uh let's go to the next. So that's so that, the image that's, of what. Yeah, that's the yeah. Yeah, but that, that beautiful lady right there. That's the lady that birthed me. That's my mama there. Um, I know she she probably online. That's my mother. Uh, and so this was uh, this was after the show, and uh, she came up and checked it out, and we uh, we spent time together. But I think this is the first time um, my mother uh, seen my work and in a space like this. And so when she saw it, um, she was very happy, um, and she you know she was very impacted. She was like, I'm gonna bring all my friends. You know how mothers are. I'm gonna bring all my friends, everybody here, just to see your art. But uh, this this four foot by eight foot painting, uh, literally the end of the messages. It, it made you know it had my mother proud of me, and I wish my aunt. Uh, could have saw this painting because uh, it, it meant a lot to me because I don't think my aunt, um, at one point in my life, I was doing my art, you know, out, out of the telling out of the trunk and going to like little events and stuff. And uh, she didn't get to see this this part of my life and something she could have. But um, yeah, that's why this, this painting is very special to me. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, okay. This is my baby here. Uh, this, <laughs> so I just finished. Uh, a very uh, big show called Made Down South here in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, thanks to a black owned business, Adorn. I just went to this business to tell them about an idea I had about hanging these performance artworks up. Anyway, uh, people came out. Uh, we had chicken, fish, uh, we had drinks, we had we had a good time and we just showed up. Um, and that was the open and the open was supposed to make you feel like I was back home, um, but I was here in Baltimore and this painted, this mural here um, is called From the Dirt. And From the Dirt is to express the owner's son. Um, his name is Maximus and uh, he's a, a young boy and, and he's, this painting was made to like show his expression of uh, how he was, uh, he's like, I think 18 months and he handed me one of my tools and uh because when i was trying to work on the wall and everything he handed me a tool and so i said man i don't know what i'm gonna paint this mural of. and i was like i want to paint him i just got to and so i said man can i paint a mural in your business she said go ahead son do what you you know go ahead and she gave me free range um this is one of my uh my, i think my third murals ever in my life and so i was very happy about doing this and so this painting is supposed to show him uh his protection of his innocence um and you can see in his eyes you know these, uh, these colors of joy these colors of vibrancy it's supposed to protect his innocence as a black male um, because he's so joyful and, you know, um, as men, as, as you know, brother, as we get older, um, sometimes we can lose that joy um, if we go down the yeah. path that we have no chance of choosing. Um, and so this painting, this mural is supposed to definitely express that. And uh, I pray, you know, so that I get to do way, way more than this back home. And so I want to be able to create murals like this for people and uh, here in the city and back home. Awesome. Awesome. What do we have uh, up next? So this is you doing your thing. <laughs> yeah, we we show, well, listen. We cut up at the, at the get uh, at the get. You know, uh, I'm glad they showed us images. Uh, but this was a performative piece. Um, I did the uh, Harvey. Um, and on this day, um, an artist, a, a sister artist of mine, uh, Sasha Morton, uh, passed. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm not liking to start all my paintings off of with uh, someone passing, but uh, this is my real life, and so I just want to express the truth. Um, so when she passed, um, I named this painting uh, "Don't Don't Touch Her Hair" um, because her name on Instagram is "Don't Touch My Hair" uh, before she passed away. Um, I bet she called me, my artist friend called me. She said, "You know, Sasha, she she passed," and so I was very emotional before coming to the event. Um, I was almost late and made it in time, but um, I got there in time and uh, I painted this live painting. Um, as you can see in my face, that uh, this is the performance work that I'm talking about. Um, and again, at first, you know, they didn't know the verification, like the whole extent of my work, but they gave me a chance to express myself. And so when, uh, when they did give me a chance, I said, don't worry about it. You know, I'm gonna take care of y'all. I'm gonna have, we gonna have a good time. He's like, you sure? I said, yeah. So how big the flame get? How did they was concerned about the fire? But the same <laughs> <laughs> they weren't against me uh, being an artist, and that's one thing I'm very grateful for again for allowing me to be uh, my artist self, my whole, my southern self, my full southernness. And so when I painted this piece, uh, as you can see, the crowd they took their phones out. We played some Jill Scott. Uh, I think we played a little bit of uh, some Rhapsody, some Nas, but we played music. And then that eight minutes, that eight minutes created an impactful joy. Um, that created a moment, and that created an intentional moment, a uh, visual vanguard moment in that space. And um, I love doing cold piece for people. I love painting live for people. I wish I, I want to do it for the rest of my life until I can't walk no more. And I just want to continue to have a good time with folks in the space. Um, but um, like I said, a lot of these performative paintings are are 
right? Just to, to show impact for. And this is the painting here of uh, of you know so of that of that piece, and just dedicated to my uh, my sister artist um, in, in love. Um, and so the aesthetic of this painting is to show Bantu knots because my mother she's a hairdresser, and uh, I I she does she's been styling hair my whole life, and so I would sit on the floor and I would hear, get those smells of the of hair being done my whole life, and so I love you know creating this black aesthetic of these black hair. Um, to show um, the the diaspora of, of beauty and joy um, in between people and people's faces and the serious stare, the focus stare of, of the um, the black diaspora of women, um, because it, it's impactful for me because I've been raised by women. I've seen them my whole life, and it's so impactful because when they talk to you, they only talking to you to uh, to pour into you. And uh, the men, the black men, they they break it, you know, break you out of uh, what they're pouring into, and and unlock so much greatness in you. Um, and so a lot of times we miss that part. So that's why this painting, most paintings like this are impactful uh, for me. And I love this. Uh, thank you. This is cool. Incredible. Like Incredible. Incredible. So well, I think this may be the final one. Let, let's uh, move through yeah, this quickly a, because I down to the final 10 minutes. And I want to just spend some time with each of you in your studio before we wrap up. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make it short. So this piece is called "The Journey to Becoming." Shout out to the Greenmount West Community Center for coming up with the name. My director, Miss Keisha Webster, uh, uh, gonna, she's gonna be Dr. Sin Watch. But uh, she told me about this time where, as becoming an artist, it kind of impacted me to kind of talk this way uh, because the journey to becoming uh, was supposed to show a pathway of somebody becoming a new, um, whether that be man or woman or whatever identified as becoming a new, a new, uh, a new person. Um, uh, and a new self. And so when my mother saw it again, uh, it was very impactful for to just talk about the journey that I went through and to talk about the Gullah Geechee culture. As you see, the uh, like they talked about, uh, there's a uh, sweet grass um, basket in the Gullah Geechee culture, and I incorporated the sweet grass by my rose flowers into it and the thorns to protect it as well. So um, I really enjoyed this piece. And it was actually at the um, Af Avery Research Center, African American um, in uh, Charleston, South Carolina as well, too. So I, I really enjoyed this piece. Great, great. So um, so here's what we're going to do since we're down to the final few minutes. I want each of you to show me one thing in your studio that you're excited about. So we're going to start with you, Dare. Oh. No, hold on. Let's start with Kobe. Let's start with Kobe. There's already. I got a minion. I don't know what to Okay, I'm going to go back to you, Kobe, since they're, they're, they're oh, chickening it out. Um, <laughs> So, so in the interest of time, it, it, let, let, so you're in your space. Can you just share with us um, just a little bit of background about one of the pieces behind you, and then we'll come back to Dare. <laughs> so this piece right here, uh, I just uh, I finished this piece in uh, 2020. I did it during the pandemic. Um, and so you guys don't know who this is, but this is uh, Toby Nick Linkway. If you know the guy that did uh, Try Me, Try Jesus, uh, Don't Try Me, Try Jesus, uh, he made those music with his family with Fat. Um, and all of them, man, uh, with that mint, that mint green. Um, and so um, this is the piece dedicated to him and I made this piece and it's been shown in, in places in Baltimore and uh, and, uh, and and it's very impactful and it's called Begotten Son. Um, and so because of my non-denominational Christian oriented, um, I'm just like, I had to create something that kind of matched the music that he makes. Um, and so what crazy is about this piece is actually, I just, uh, we, I just met him, I think the other day, the, this weekend actually. And so we, I met him, I met his family and he signed the painting. Um, as well and so the painting is to have the story of uh meeting the artist himself and uh, when he when he signed the painting which is like right there i'm happy about it um he was very happy to sign it but we also talked and i still i stood outside for like two hours with freezing toes my i was cold um but i love doing this because i get to go back and tell my youth about the crazy mess that i'll be getting into on the weekends and um, but just to have this painting, I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud to be having this painting, but I'm also going to get to create a commission uh, for his family soon. So I'm very excited about that. And um, I think it's going to be very impactful for the family and creating those uh, portraits of joy. So I'm very, um, just wanted to share that piece because it's one of my uh, joyful ones right now. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, so, Dare, are you ready for us? I'm ready now. Okay, and what I'm gonna I'm gonna show y'all a thing instead of talking about a piece because I think I think that'll be the most um exciting thing I could do. So this this part of my wall is this really hectic looking part of my wall, right? Uh, but this part of my wall is where I storyboard out some stuff for a children's book. So I can't say much about the book um that's happening. I can tell you that it's happening. 
um, and explain that, you know, part of my, my growth and process has been ways to develop like my work process so that it works better and moves more smoothly. Um, and with these brushes here, I have a great friend who's a fantastic, um, a fantastic artist and his whole thing at one point he was like there you got to get better brushes and i was so upset i was i was furious actually because i was like you don't know how much good brushes cost um and the idea of developing processes at this point in my career it's like that's the thing is figuring out how to make the work that i'm doing how to make it happen the best that it can um and you know sometimes that involves a a, a storyline where it's like i can see all the pieces sometimes that involves changing tools um i have a setup over here for clay and some other stuff and I think that's like the, the theme of right now is like what how I can best facilitate my own growth. Um, and that's what I'm going to show you all instead of showing you a painting. <laughs> no, that's that's really great that you could share that. And, uh, you know, um, I want to give a shout out to David Wilson and Stephen Hayes, who curated um, the Visual Vanguard, um, you know, at the Gantt Center uh, and really, you know, fantastic group of artists and, and the two of you are really, you know, sort of like shining examples of, of their, their, th their sort of thought process and, and creative process around curating the exhibition. So I encourage everyone who's joining us today to check out your work. Are you guys on social media? How, how do people find you there? How does someone find you? Um, I have a website, www.dareculture.com is true to dare. My Instagram is also dare culture. My Facebook is dare culture. Um, and my website in about two weeks, I'll be adding a lot of stuff to it. Uh, I know this shirt will be on here. This necklace will be here. Uh, this necklace will be here. There's so much stuff that's coming. So just, just don't <laughs> buy all your stuff yet. Just hold on one second. I just got a laser cutter. I'm gonna do some cool stuff with it. Um, and I'm on YouTube. There's stuff, there's not a lot, but you, there's some interviews and stuff that are neat up. So that, that's it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, um, cool piece. How's someone find you? Shoot, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, you know what I'm saying? Your mama's cell phone, your daddy. No, I'm just kidding. But no, nah, I'm on uh, <laughs> Instagram uh, at K O L P A C E. Uh, I have a lot of community projects and so uh, solely studio projects going on. Um, definitely support me. I have a Patreon and just it's just at Cold Piece, K O L P A C E. I have these dope hoodies uh, that are the Green Mountain West Community Center they made for me. Um, we collaborated on my hoodies and put my art on the back, uh, which is pretty cool. I don't know if y'all can see it, but I got all my artwork on the back of these hoodies, these dope hoodies, um, and they made it for me. Um, I got prints and everything that I'm collaborating with the community center and what we're doing. And what I decided to do is uh, a portion of uh, my proceeds to my artwork, it goes to the uh, Bell Community Build funding uh, to be able to fund that project. And so uh, faithfully that happens. So just DM me, message me if you want a hoodie, and I'm gonna have them online soon. So. Yeah, shout out to Steven and David, man. That's, they dope for that. There, shout out to you too. <laughs> that's Thank that's you, great. And so, uh, and so, Dare, Dare, real quick, is the Nina Simone poster still available? Uh, yeah. So there, there are prints, there are G clays of it. This, there are stickers. Um, okay. and the ones that I have are, um, they they've got my name on them and everything. So, so they're available on my website as well. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So look. I wanna tell both of you, thank you and, and, and bid you both a good evening. We're gonna close out now. Um, I wanna thank you all for joining us this evening. Uh, I hope you were able to be inspired and motivated by the journey and background of these two fantastic artists. Uh, the Gantt Center's goal is always to provide programs that inform and inspire. Support of viewers like you allows the Gantt Center to expand its reach and further develop programs like this open air discussion. To learn more about ways that you can support the Gantt Center, visit their website, gantcenter.org forward slash donate. Also be sure to click that subscribe button below the screen to be updated on all future virtual programs. We look forward to connecting with you again for next month's open air, during which we'll focus on some of the painters in Visual Vanguard. Um, and now um, I just wanna say to everyone, this was a, <laughs> this like a lot of fun for me. Um, I really enjoy doing these. So we'll be back next, back next time. Thank you all and have a great night. Thank <laughs> you.